R2 the dog. I ain't even been feeling like doing this. Ah. But let's get it. Yeah. It's probably the real driver up. BIP Red Dog 1. The O was for the 16 ounces, that's in the whole pound They really out here feeling my music, shout out the whole town K is for the killers I know, who keep the four pound You give an inch, he taking the mouth, like it was fourth down The L is for the ladies for sure, I mean the real ones Who out here working hard for the What's up world, what's up YouTube It's your boy R2, and we back with another banger You know what I'm saying, so grab some popcorn And your cold drink, and go on down there and hit that like button then hit that subscribe button and then jump over there and hit that bell so when i drop these bangers you be one of the first ones to put your eyes on it you know what i'm talking about hey man listen y'all <clears throat> today definitely was a day um i definitely appreciate the love man i appreciate all the love the comments the support you know what i mean everybody like bro drop episodes drop episodes you know what i mean so i definitely appreciate that you know what i mean i salute everybody you know what i mean who take the time out to watch these videos you know what i'm saying uh Today was the day, man. Um, we're going to jump right into story time, man. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, now, me and my wife, man, we've been knowing each other for a long time. Um, I say about, we met about 99, 99, 98. Um, I was about 11, 12 years old. You know what I'm saying? Uh, big dog, you know, them was his relatives. You know what I'm saying? And, uh Back when he first got shot, you know, my wife's big sister, you know, she used to come bright as her, you know what I'm saying? And uh, anytime she had come over, she always brought her, brought her little sister with her, you know what I'm saying? Which in turn, you know, end up being my wife long, later, later, later down the line. But, you know, um, initially we was just real cool, you know what I'm saying? Uh, because I was only like 12 years old, you know what I mean? So she was probably like 13 going on 14, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I might have been in like the sixth grade, fifth grade. She was a grade ahead of me, so she is already, I think I was in fifth grade, She or I was in sixth grade, and she was already in high school, you know, or, or you know, um, she was like seventh grade or something like that, eighth grade. We ain't nothing but a year apart, you know what I'm saying? She graduated 06, I graduated 07, you know what I'm saying? So, um, so yeah, we met back in like 98, man, you know what I'm saying? Um, this girl taught me how to kiss, you know what I'm saying? Um, due to, a, you know, a mutual friend that we had, man, we used to go to the pool. A lot of people used to come to my apartments back in the day, you know, Aspen Place. They look like crap now, you know what I'm saying? But back in the day, psh, them suckers was jumping, you know what I'm saying? Um, they definitely, you know, had two big pools, two big pools. And my, my apartment that me and my mama and Reggie stayed in, you know what I'm saying, the back gate, our back gate to our porch, patio, whatever you call it, you know what I'm saying? You could look right down at the pool, you know what I'm saying? So I stayed in the pool, you know what I mean? Uh, especially summertime, we ain't got to go to school, man, we in that pool, you know? And my wife, you know, she would come over, her and her cousins, and we would kick it, you know, because we all was around the same age group, you know what I'm saying? Um, so we would kick it, you know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of people come through swim from, uh, you know, the, the, the area that we grew up in, the north side, you know what I'm saying? So, um, that's how we met, man. And, um, uh, we ended up being real tight, like super tight. We even, you know, used to kind of get into it. You know what I'm saying? I remember I, I tried to get my big cousin to, 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 you know, get at her, you know what I mean? Just cause we used to always sit on the phone, be on the phone all the time. You know how kids is, you know what I'm saying? Especially back then in the nineties, you know what I'm saying? First of the two thousands, you know what I mean? So we've been knowing each other a long time now. We was, you know, we hooked up in high school. We ended up being together in high school, you know. But, you know, we was on two different paths. I was in the streets. You know, she was graduating. She actually graduated. I didn't graduate. You know, I dropped out. So she was she was on to doing the right thing, you know. She was trying to get her life together. And, you know, I was in the streets, you know, bullcrapping. You know what I'm saying? Um, so we was on and off, you know what I mean? We still kicked it. But, you know, we wasn't really nothing serious, you know. Um, I cared about her. She cared about me. But, you know, our lives didn't match up at that time. You know what I'm saying? So um, I ended up going to the penitentiary, you know, 20, 
2010. I ended up catching my first case 2009. And I think that's when she had her first kid in 2009, if I'm not mistaken. You know what I'm saying? Her first baby boy. So our lives was headed in different paths. So, of course, she ended up getting with this dude that we end up that we went to school with. Now, this dude was no friend of mine, but he wasn't no enemy of mine either. I didn't ever look at this dude as a threat or none of that. You know, he was a square dude. You know what I'm saying? I didn't. He wasn't my type of dude to, to hang with. You know what I'm saying? I, and that's not a bad thing. It's just I didn't. That wasn't my crowd. You know what I'm saying? And uh, when I heard, you know, when I ended up finding out that's that's who she was, you know, having a kid with, you know, I was shocked, you know, because it didn't really line up with who she was either. You did what I'm saying? So, you know, but I never, you know, pushed the issue. You know, it is what it is. It ain't nothing I can change. You know what I'm saying? And I'm on my way to the penitentiary. This is my first trip. So I get, I go to the penitentiary, get out the penitentiary, 2012. Um, July 13th, 2012, I get out the penitentiary. It's a Friday. My first trip. Boom, I get out. I'm doing my thing, you know, I'm out for a few months, Ooh, you know, uh, I end up seeing her, you know what I mean, pulled up on her at her grandma's, you know what I mean, saw her, hugged her, whatever, you know, I've been gone, you know what I'm saying, she got a baby now, uh, maybe two, you know, I'm, I don't really remember, but it, it, I know she had one for sure, so, um, yeah, she just had one, so, you know, she was doing her thing with her, you know, trying to get her family together, you know, that she had created, so I was doing my, you know, I'm still running the streets. First time I got to penitentiary, I wasn't trying to settle down or do none of that. I was, you know, running the streets. Yeah, I had a bra, but, you know, even with that, you know, I cared about her, but, you know, I was, man, you know, if the wrong, you know, thing happened today, I could be gone tomorrow, you know what I'm saying? So, I wasn't even mature enough to be in a relationship, you know what I mean? But I had a a chick though, you know, that I kept around, you know, but it wasn't my wife at the time, you know what I'm saying? So uh, she's doing her thing, I'm doing mine, but you know, we still wasn't, we wasn't back kicking it or nothing, you know what I'm saying? So boom, I'm only out a year and four months. I ended up going back to the pen. I ended up going back to the pen. And the crazy thing is her little cousins used to come, you know, buy trees from me, you know what I mean? And she'd be telling me the story of how she was in the car one time when they came to buy trees and I didn't speak to her and it hurt her feelings or whatever. But you know, I, I don't even remember that day, but if it happened, like I told her, you know, you know, I was moving fast. I'm trying to get them they herb and I'm trying to get my money and get on back to, you know what I mean? And plus I had a chick in the house at the time. So even if we did, you know, it wouldn't have been a good time. You know what I'm saying? So um, but you know, she swear I didn't speak or whatever. I didn't mean to not speak, you know, because it's my dog, been my dog forever. You know what I'm saying? Even though she would just do, you know, I ain't never pushed the issue about this. You know what I'm saying? Uh so I go to the pen again. Now, this time when I go to the pen, I ain't even worried about, you know, I ain't even really thinking about her, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm, you know, I'm, I got a sentence to, you know, they just gave me a 20 year sentence, you know what I'm saying? I'm finna do, you know, seven, eight years on this joint, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm doing my thing, you know what I'm saying? So when I get to the penitentiary, when I get to the pen, I'm like a year or two into my sentence. It's like 2015, we come in contact again via social media, and then we start talking on the phone, you know what I'm saying? So at this time, I'm looking for a rider, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, you know, I'm trying to see what she's talking about, because if she with it, I'm with it, you know what I'm saying? We got history, you know, we always cared about each other, so, you know, it's it's a layup, you feel me? So uh, uh, anyway, she was end up having another, she was having another kid at this time. You know, she was getting ready to have another kid at this time. So her last kid, matter of fact, she was having her last boy. And, you know, she was trying to make it work with her family, give dude a shot. You know, they got three kids in all at this point. You know what I'm saying? So she trying to make it work, which I applaud that. But what I respect the most is she kept it gangster with me. I'm in the penitentiary. Most females are lie to you. Tell you, oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. But they got this Negro laying up with them. You know what I'm saying? And you only know what you hear on the phone. You know what I'm saying? Because in physical form, you're not there. You locked up where you can't go home. You know what I'm saying? So you have no way of knowing what's true and what ain't. But she kept it so real. You know, she let me know that, you know, um, the timing was just off and that her having this kid, you know, she wanted to give it a shot, a, give him a first shot at his family, you know what I'm saying, to do right. 
And I respected that. Most now, most cats, when you when you tell them something like that, a female tell them something like that, and they locked up, they're gonna keep calling, keep texting, keep on sending messages, and you know, making it uncomfortable for you at home with what you got going on. I never did none of that. I stayed, I kept it respectful, and I just fell back. Because I mean, it's not like I'm hurting for no, you know what I mean? I got plenty of females. It's plenty of action at this time. Facebook booming, POF booming. So you know, it's plenty of action, and I ain't never been scared of no action when it comes to dealing with females. You know what I'm saying? That's one of my specialties. You know what I'm saying? So I fell back from the situation out of respect. Let's note that back in 2015, I could have pressed the issue, you know, and made it made a you know been the reason that the family didn't get to stick together. You know what I'm saying? But I fell back. So that's 2015. So fast forward two years, 2017, I guess it didn't work out. I guess he wasn't ready to, you know, to be fully committed like you're supposed to. You got three kids with this woman. You're supposed to lock that down. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to make sure she, especially having the qualities that she got, she was raised by a grandmother. She was raised by a grandmother. Her cooking is immaculate. You know what I'm saying? She cater to a man. You know what I'm saying? She do anything under the sun for the for the for the man she love. You know what I'm saying? She don't step out and cheat. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, you know, it's a no brainer for me. You dig what I'm saying? When you if you get into a sticky situation, a jam, she gonna ride. You know what I'm saying? So we fast forward two years. It's 2017. I'm just getting to Dick Connors. I'm getting transferred from Holdenville. I didn't got into a fight with my celly. Me and my celly, we ended up getting down. Boom, 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 boom. While we was on phases in the max, you know, he took off on me in front of the cops. Yo, I told y'all that story. He took off on me in front of the cops. I, we blend. We, we did that. Boom, 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 we did our stuff. Boom, boom, boom. They sprayed me down. Took me to the hole. I sat for some months. About six months, then they end up finally shipping me. I get to Dick Connors. Now, when I get to Dick Connors, I'm I'm looking for, you know what I mean? I'm looking to get on the phone, to reach out, check my inboxes on Facebook, see who been missing me, what's what's cracking. You know, I'd have made it to a, yard, a state yard from a private. Anybody been to Oklahoma prison? No. Private facility, uh, the economy is boo-boo. The phones is... Four or five thousand. They scarce. You know, the market is real slim because, you know, the, the product, you know, the stuff that we can get in here is very thin. You know, what I mean, behind the fence at a private man, you ain't really try, you ain't really going to get on like that. You know, what I mean, so it ain't going to be plentiful. So the prices is going to be skyrocket. And then even if you go spend that forty five hundred for a phone. They pressing the gas. Every chance they get, they trying to catch you with this phone. So it's like, now, when they move me to Dick Connors, Dick Connors is more lax. It's a state yard. It's, a, it's plentiful. It's phones everywhere. So I hollered at an a, 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 a Indian cat, and he had a little flip phone for sale for like three, 400 So I'm like, bet. I had the homies let me use one of their horns to get on my inbox, check and see, check my trap, see what's going on. So as I'm checking my inboxes, I, I look and it's an inbox from her, from my wife right now. It's an inbox from her telling me happy birthday from the last birthday that had passed. So I hit her up. What's up? And man, honestly, we ain't stopped communicating with each other since that day. Like this is 2017. I didn't get out till 2020. So she rode the rest of that 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 I had already done four years. I had three more to do. I didn't get out till 2020, 2017. She been she 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 was in my corner from that day forward that I made that phone call from that inbox that said happy birthday. Now, we ended up getting married at the next yard I went to. We filed for it. Woo woo. At visit one day, we was the first people to get to visit early in the morning, like seven o'clock, me, my mama, her, and the pastor. 
And we did that. And we rolled that thing out. You know what I'm saying? And here it is, 2024. I got out 20. We, we got married, I think, 2019. I got out 2020. I got out 2020. And here it is, 2024. Now, her and her baby daddy, the Negro that fumbled her. Now, this is the problem I had with this clown. When I was locked up, when I was at Just Done, prior to me getting home, so this is like 2019, heading to 20, because I get out in 20, but I don't get out to July 1st. So in an attempt to get her back in his good graces, he tries to lie on me and tell her that I'm talking to a chick that we went to high school with that I ain't seen in 15, 16 years, let alone talk to or spoke to. And, and I'm thinking in my head, like, man, Negro, use a sucker because for one, you lying on me. I ain't talked to this woman. I want somebody to contact her to, to, to speak up, to, to ask her if I didn't spoke to her because I ain't talked to her. Even when we was going to high school together, that was nobody that I ever, you know, tried to pursue. You dig what I'm saying? So it's like he just snatched the name from out of thin air that we both went to school with, that we both would know, and tried to say that I was talking to her behind her back. That's that that that's for one, that's weird. Because you lying on me for one. And for two, if I was, why would you do that? As men. You a buster. You know what I'm saying? So I get into it with the cat. I I, I instantly hit him in the inbox, calling. Like, bro, when I get out there, I'm going to twist your drawers in your in your behind because, because you being weird. You know what I'm saying? It ain't no time that I ever spoke to this woman that you inquiring or you, you, you accusing me of going behind the baby mama that you just did wrong. You trying to get back in her good graces by lying on me, making it seem like I'm two-timing her or something. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and the Negro was just always throwing a little salt on me, bro. Any chance he got, he was throwing salt on me, man. And I just couldn't understand it because we went to school together. Negro, we ain't never had an issue. Never. You wasn't my, you wasn't my crowd of guys, but I ain't, I ain't never did nothing to you. But see, this dude always was jealous of me just because, man, I don't even know because we ain't never got into it or had no disputes about nothing. This ain't even my type of dude to deal with. You feel me? This nigga, this Negro's a square. You know what I'm saying? So this the, that's the first time. So I get on him. I bang on him over the phone. He says some, you know, some weird stuff, you know, mention my T. Jones. You know what I mean? So I'm like, man, when I get out, I'm on your head. So. Fast forward to 2020, I get out. Fast forward to 2020, I get out. Now, we living. We ain't worried about this clown. He coming to pick the kids up and everything. Never even look at me. He won't even, I roll with her one day to drop the kids off. He won't even look at me. He won't even make eye contact with me. You dig what I'm saying? So, I'm blowing it off. I ain't paying it no mind. You dig what I'm saying? So, it seems like, Every time he get a chance to make it difficult for her, he makes it difficult for her. You dig what I'm saying? And I start having an issue with that because co-parenting ain't got to be hard. All you got to do is handle your business. Your kids is taken care of. All you got to do is do what you're supposed to do as they dad, which is pick them up, have clothes for them when they go over there, make sure they take a bath when, before they come home, and make sure they clean and they self and brushing their teeth when they over there. You dig what I'm saying? Princess, be quiet. Excuse me, y'all. That's my dog, man. She, she's a nut. But anyway, you know, that's all you got to do, you know, because they mama going to make sure they straight. You dig what I'm saying? And I'm going to make sure they straight. Anytime they ask for something or need assistance with something, that's what I'm there for. I'm not their daddy, but I'm here to back up their mama. So if they mama need, if need help with them financially, emotionally, mentally, whatever, I'm that backup. But see, a real dude will respect that out of another man because a woman could choose to go, she could have chose to go get anybody to, to date and to marry. She could have married a weirdo. 
you know, somebody that mistreats the kids or somebody that, you know, don't show them the love that they're supposed to get. They're not my kids, but I would never tell them that. You know what I'm saying? I look out for them just like they are mine. But see, Negroes get it con conscrewed because I don't have any children. I'm not a dad yet. So I don't have responsibilities to children. People with kids do. You dig what I'm saying? So anything I do for the kids or or it's all out of love. You understand what I'm saying? Not by obligation. And this dude, he like to make it hard, you know, just doing little simple stuff. He won't even pay for his oldest boys AU basketball. He just missed his middle son's eighth grade graduation. Like what kind of real dude is that? Your kids only graduate from eighth grade one time. They only graduate from high school one time. They only get these crucial years of playing basketball and sports and doing things that they like to do one time. Once the kid, you know, once the kid life is over, it's over. And it's like every t every chance he get, he like to bring my name up to her when they arguing about why he's not doing what he should do as a father which is kicking in financially. I don't know where you dudes got it misconstrued that once you and your baby mother are done having sex and done being relational and done like that, that your financial responsibilities for your children stop because they don't. That's a sucker move. And he feel like that he don't got to do for his children because she's with another man. And that's farthest from the truth. That's stupidity. Because you laid down with this woman and had them kids, not me. You did. But see, that don't matter when they need something. Because if I got it, what you need, I got you. Don't worry about it. If they need a haircut, I got you. But I'm not going to force it on them. I never force it on them. Because I was raised by my stepdad, a stepdad. You dig what I'm saying, Big Red Dog? That was my step pops. You know, but you couldn't tell that. A lot of people don't know that because, me, by the way, me and him operated. We didn't operate like stepdad and stepson. We operated like, like dad and son. You know what I'm saying? And people on the outside that don't understand, they, it's not for them to understand. You dig what I'm saying? And today was just a day, man, because I woke up on one, inboxed him. Because, see, when I first came home, I told him, look, I need that. For that, for that, for that issue we had over the phone, that woofing you was doing, I need that, bro. He said, "Oh man, I'm at work. I'll call you as soon as I get off." Man, it's been it's been two years. I ain't heard from this cat, but he always saying something to my wife. He always got my name in, in his mouth to my wife. He always, you know, trying to be slick mouth with her. You ain't got to be slick mouth with her. Come do it with me. I want to beat your lips off because I feel like you a sucker. You know what I'm saying? Because there's no way in hell that my name should be getting mentioned when you're dealing with your baby's mother, bro. And I ain't, and I ain't, you know, I ain't disciplining your kids. I ain't mistreating your kids. I ain't doing nothing but trying to help your kids. Do y'all understand how much it costs to feed three boys and two adults every night? That's at least a 60, 70 ball, at least. Come on, man, y'all do the math. And these half these halftime dads think that buying a pair of shoes every, you know, two, two, three hundred days is something. That's nothing. That's why I got the most utmost respect for strong black women, strong women, period, in this world, because mama can't quit. Daddy can say he can't get it right now or he ain't got it right now. I grew up with a daddy like that. I grew up with a daddy that was so selfish. And so self-centered that he forgot about me. You dig what I'm saying? As a man, your only boy child should mean a little bit more to you, man. You know what I'm saying? Your boys, because you, you was once a boy. You know how it feels to be in a boy's position. And, 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 and the influences that you see around. And, and, and eventually... Your kids is going to see that you ain't handling your business. Your kids is grown enough to understand that their mama is doing it all by herself. You not kicking in at all. 
You know what I'm saying? And that's sad because, you know, just because a Negro know that his BM got a good job and know what kind of person she is and she ain't going to let her kids go without, he feel like he can do the bare minimum. And that's not right. You a sucker if you feel like that. And, 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 and anytime your kids are scared to ask you for something, when they mama be like, ask your daddy, they be like, never mind. That's tough. Because I was one stir. Ask your daddy. We get tired of asking and it don't happen. You get tired of getting let down. You get tired of, you know, them not being there. You get tired of them not showing up when they're supposed to be there. You get tired of looking in them stands and looking for dad and he ain't there. Eventually, that 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 boy going to turn into a man and he going to quit looking for dad. Now the streets is his dad. Now the books is his dad. Now whatever career he chooses is dad. Now he's a now he's a tainted, a tainted spirit, you know, going into the world, you know, not knowing the proper love because he ain't never been gave it. You Negroes think hollering at your kids and making them feel this small is, is, is some kind of discipline. That's boo boo. You know what I'm saying? Your kids, you got to you got to nurture your kids, man. Your kids is, is who going to have to look out for you when you in a diaper. You dig what I'm saying? Take time to listen to your kids, man. You know, he get mad because his kids like video games. Bruh, kids like video games. My ne my Negro. Kids love video games. You need, to, you need to start talking to your kids and asking your kids why they don't want to come to your house. It ain't, it ain't their mama's fault. They barely even take baths when they over there. They don't even brush their teeth when they over there. You dig what I'm saying? And you think they want to come to your house? Come on, brothers. We got to be better fathers than that. We got to be better fathers than that because yet it's Negroes out here still making babies, man. They can't take care of the ones that they got. It's no way in hell that your kids should want for anything. They didn't ask to be here. You wanted them to be here in your, in your simple mind in a moment of lust. You dig what I'm saying? And you didn't even really understand what you got coming into this world, bro. These is kids and they blessings and they want stuff and they and it's going to cost money. But see, these Negroes think just because they quit messing with their BM sexually and emotionally that they don't have to do for their children. Brother, I'm here to tell you that you are a mother fool. You understand what I'm saying? So. That's how my day went, man. Charging this dude up. He still ain't messaged me back. He still ain't got back at me. I done went live on Facebook getting at him. He still ain't hit me back. But see, this is a valuable lesson to myself, man, because, you know, you cannot let the things that people say out their mouth bother you. As long as a person don't touch you, put their hands on you, man, you ain't got no issue with these people because people like to throw rocks and then hide their hands. It's cowards in this world, a lot of cowards in this world, and they'll sit and they'll talk, but when it comes time to get busy and get active, bro, they ain't going to be nowhere around, man. You know what I'm saying? And I'm the type that I'm going to go to jail behind somebody with my last name, bro. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm flip a switch, and, and, and then we can all, you know, go up. You dig what I'm saying? That's just me. But, hey, man, I appreciate y'all for listening. I appreciate y'all for staying down. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm going to let him make it, y'all. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to take my foot up off the pedal. You know what I'm saying? But I just wish that, you know, people could learn to stop stop doing this. If you ain't about this, if you ain't about nothing, stop doing this, bro. Because everybody ain't playing. You dig what I'm saying? But me, I got enough respect for the kids and for my wife, you know, not to, you know, press the green light unless it's absolutely necessary. You dig what I'm saying? So I appreciate y'all for listening, man. It's your boy, R2. And, you know, we're going to keep it real. We're going to stay down and we're going to make it happen, man. And I appreciate all the supporters. I appreciate all the comments, all the subscriptions. Man, y'all the truth. Stay down for your come up and don't let nobody play with you. You dig what I'm saying? It's your boy R2 and I'm gone. Peace.